I'm going to leave everything as it is, except I'm going to add in one CFL light. Take that one off, and just for the sake, I'm putting it back on. We have the same condition, that is running 4 kilohertz. Taking it off, leave everything, bring it back, we have 4.5 kilohertz. So the only thing I'm changing is I'm going to add in one CFL. Move it a little bit up. Putting it back on. We have 4.3 kilohertz. We lost a spike here. Sometimes it does that. Okay, the lights are a little bit less. Spike is one tenth of a millimeter less. The hertz has gone up to 5.2 hertz. Spikes on the screen are very similar to what it was before. Leave everything as it is. Take that OK off. Back. Touch up again. 5.3, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, and there. And this one is reading 1 kilohertz, but it is not measuring very closely. The distance there is about 20 centimeters. I'm disconnecting. I'm adding in the third light. And connecting up. Now, this has jumped to 8.3 kilohertz. The spikes are smaller, but the density of the spikes is much, much higher. So at the moment, the scope is running on one millisecond. I'm going to increase it for half. That is 500 milliseconds. Because the three lights, also the energy available around in the environment is less, that's why we have this. So if I take my probe from the scope and I bring it closer, it picks up. So when I'm coming close, I'm not touching, I'm just keeping it on top of the globes. It is running now somewhere like 20 volts, 21 volts. Stop. We can see the size of the scope of, the, of that there. Now what I want to do is I just want to extend my, my probe a little bit. So only thing I did is I just connected I just took a piece of wire and I wrapped it around my scope extension, if you like. It's not connecting to anything. Oh, okay, sorry, it's connected to the point there. Maybe I should take it off. Earth wire connecting up there to increase the strength. Now, what I would like you to see in this stage, now it's still a closed loop. In other words, as far as I'm calling closed loop, Energy from the battery through the whole circuit, through the light, da 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 da, da come back to the light. Except for about, with the three lights, somewhere like half a millimeter of space between those two, two, two heads there. Now, my probe, going to disconnect this, this wire again, putting it next to the lights, right there, and I'm going to decrease. So we have now 46 volt and 34 volt. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this line. Now, the lights are running on their own. We have 40 volt, 36 volt. I put the earth wire up there. Now we put it in the earth wire. Still 40 by 36. And to remind me, this thing is beaming, 
it's 7, 000, uh, 7 kilohertz. Let's see what it's doing on that little chip on the bottom there. Nothing. Can there with a probe, catching it for a second. That's transferring energy. So closed loop give me 14 volts and minus 10 volt. Open loop gives me 22 volt by 16 volt. 62 volts. Putting it directly on top of the lights and we have 192 volt by 164 volt on the open loop. So the spikes that we are getting on top is much more than the spikes on the front of the lights. And that is exactly where my reason comes in to call this the, the dynamic resonance theory. As I'm increasing the lights, the cycle, the Hertz cycle goes faster. And although the lights come dimmer, get more dim, we have a tremendous amount of more electricity or energy flowing around in this whole area. We can measure it for, for quite a bit of a distance. I have my little favorite toroid thing here. So next to the scope, that's on the scope. The scope is running at 220 volts. That's what it's picking up there. Coming closer to the coil, that's where we get into the coil. Coming on top of the coil, you see there's almost nothing. Down, I'm trying to keep the same distance from the coil. It almost stays the same. Right on top, yeah, there it goes up, there it goes up, there it goes down at the bottom. Oh, by the way, I in the next video I will show you some spare parts and some of these concepts that I'm playing with. Coming to the lights, and it goes off the scale. So with my toroid on the first light, volt division is 182 and 100 and minus 140. On the second light, it's 190, 186, 172 minus 140. On the third light, it's 250 by 220. So all my lights, the first light is the strongest of all. Second light is weaker. Third light is the weakest, but the third light emits the highest amount of energy. Now I'm going to take the camera for a few seconds and just bring it for you closer for the sake of sound. That's the first light, that's the second light, that's the third light, that's the coil. End of part one.